While the 1987 McDonald's All-American team only has one future NBA All-Star, several players carved out solid careers in college and the pros. That said, there are a few players who, for whatever reason, didn't make the cut in 87. The list of players who didn't make the squad includes one-time All-Star and 2003 champ Steve Smith, and one-time All-Star Dale Davis, among others. And while he was playing in his native Australia and is not eligible for the list, it's worth shouting out three-time champ Luke Longley. With all of that said, let's take a look at what happened to every McDonald's All-American player from the 87 squad. Perry Carter Carter moved to Maine to play high school ball and then went to Ohio State. As a Buckeye, the 6'8 center started over 100 games over his four-year career, posting averages of 13 points and 8 rebounds while contributing about one steal and one block a night. During his senior season, Ohio State was ranked as highly as fifth overall, but lost to St. John's in the Sweet 16. It doesn't look like Carter was drafted by an NBA team, instead carving out a lengthy career overseas. He played for various teams through 2003, and I've been unable to find anything concrete about his post-playing career. Chris Corciani. Corciani played his college ball at NC State where he became the first Division I player to total 1,000 career assists. The six-foot guard dropped more than eight dishes a night over his four-year career, adding 11.5 points and 2.6 steals for good measure. In fact, the man they called Fire also left college ball in fifth place all-time on the NCAA steals list, though he's since dropped several spots. Corgiani was selected with the 36th pick by the Magic in the 91 draft and spent about a decade playing worldwide, including stints with Orlando, the Bullets, and the Celtics. In total, he played in about 112 NBA games, starting one and averaging about two assists and four points a night. After hanging him up in 2002, he worked as a realtor and then owned a mortgage bank. Most recently, he founded a title insurance agency in North Carolina. John Crotty the point guard was widely recruited in high school and decided to play for Virginia for college ball. As of 2024, he still holds the record for most assists in a season, though his career mark was bested by Kihei Clark in 2023. He was a two-time third-team All-ACC selection, posting career averages of 13 points and 5.3 assists over his four years as a Cav. Karate went undrafted in 91 and spent a year in the lower leagues before he was picked up by the Jazz in 92. He played for about a decade in the NBA, coming off the bench as a steady hand for Utah, Cleveland, Miami, Portland, Seattle, Detroit, and Denver. He never averaged more than 7 points and 3.5 assists, but did play in nearly 500 career games and became well known for his signature karate chop after a deep three. Since 2005, he's been working in broadcasting, most notably as a radio analyst for the Heat. Bison Dele Buckle up, folks. If you want a full deep dive into Dele's story, there are plenty out there, but here are the cliff notes. The 6'11 forward started his college career at Maryland. He played a single season with the team, averaging 12.5 points and 6 boards while starting every game he suited up for. Dele then sat out a year after transferring to Arizona. Numbers-wise, Dele was essentially the same player all three years of his college career and skipped his senior season to go to the NBA. The Magic made him the 10th pick of the 91 draft, but only played him sparingly during his two seasons with the team. He was traded to the Nuggets in 93 and improved quite a bit while still coming off the bench. Dele played one more season in Denver before the team traded him to the Clippers. There, he had his best season yet, averaging 16 points and nearly 8 boards a night while starting 65 games. Dele then had a long contract dispute with the front office and didn't find a team until the 97 playoffs when he signed with the Bulls and won a championship as a solid backup. In 98, he signed with Detroit and played well. That was also the year he changed his name to Bison Dele to honor his Cherokee and African ancestry. He played well that season and the next before retiring relatively suddenly ahead of the 99-2000 season. At the time, he was the Pistons' highest paid player, but he walked away from his contract with five years remaining because of a strained relationship with the organization. On July 6, 2002, he sailed from Tahiti on a catamaran along with his girlfriend, brother, and the boat skipper. His brother, Miles DeBoer, was the only person involved in the trip who was ever heard from as of July 8, 2002. On September 27, 2002, DeBoer intentionally overdosed on insulin and slipped into a coma. Unfortunately, he later died from complications. Before that, police found that DeBoer had forged Dele's signature to buy $152,000 worth of gold and used his passport. There were also credible reports from the FBI that he'd used weights to make it impossible to find the bodies. 
However, with the Boar being the only first person source of information, we'll never truly know what happened to Dele and the two other passengers. Jay Edwards. Edwards led his Marion Giants to three straight championships in the mid 80s. Silk's jump shot was one of the smoothest in the country and fans expected big things of him when he signed with Indiana. Thankfully, Edwards mostly delivered. He won the Big Ten Freshman of the Year in 1988 while setting the freshman record for three-point shooting percentage. He followed that up by winning the 1989 Big Ten Player of the Year and making second team All-American. Since he'd already established himself as a walking bucket, he decided to head to the NBA. The Clippers selected him with the 33rd pick in the 89 draft, but the 6'4 guard would only play in four career NBA games. He spent the next decade playing the CBA and overseas, retiring in 2001 after a year in Argentina. As of 2015, Edwards was working back in Indiana, pursuing coaching opportunities. Jerome Harmon While playing in the McDonald's game, Harmon was the only undecided player. Eventually, he'd sign with Louisville. The guard spent a single year with the school, averaging 15 points while coming off the bench for every game. Technically, he was around the program for several more years, but academic and injury issues kept him from suiting up for more than one season. He went undrafted in 91 and spent several years in the CBA. In 95, Harmon signed a contract with the 76ers and averaged 5 points across 10 games. However, a concussion would lead to him being released. Harmon played a few more years in the CBA before retiring after the 98 season. I haven't been able to find anything about his post-playing career, so if you know more, please share it below. Bill Heppner the 6'8 center joined a solid DePaul roster and wasn't able to get much playing time in his two seasons with the team. Part of that was due to injuries, which would eventually end his career by his junior season. That said, Hepner did reportedly break the backboard in three straight games during high school, which is three more than I ever broke. It appears that he's since gone into medical sales after attending Harvard Business School. Sean Higgins Higgins was born in Detroit, but he spent his high school days playing for Fairfax in L.A. The Dean went back to his home state to attend Michigan, winning a title during his sophomore season. Higgins was a solid contributor during his three years with the school, averaging 12.5 points for his career. The Spurs picked him in the second round of the 1990 draft, and the Dean carved out a decade-long career hopping between NBA teams and overseas. After retiring from the game in 2001, Higgins started coaching at various levels, but also opened up several seemingly successful businesses over the years. Larry Johnson Johnson took his talents to UNLV and was instantly one of the best players in the country. As a freshman, Grandma Mom made the first team All-American roster and won an NCAA title. The next year, he repeated the former and won National College Player of the Year. Of course, the Red and Rebels of those days had several recruiting issues and misconduct penalties, but it was clear that Johnson was going to be a star. The Hornets selected him first overall in the 91 draft, and Grandma Mom won Rookie of the Year with 19 points and 11 boards. LJ quickly became one of the most popular players in the league, making an all-star team in his second season. In 93, he signed the richest deal in NBA history at the time, but relatively soon after, he sprained his back, keeping him out of several games. That injury robbed him of some of the explosiveness that made him a star, so LJ improved his jump shot and continued to post solid numbers while making another all-star team in 95. Unfortunately, he butted heads with the Hornets' other star, Alonzo Mourning, leading to both players being traded before the 96 season. Grandma Mom went to the Knicks that year, but back injuries lingered and he never regained his All-Star form. LJ retired after the 2001 season as a two-time All-Star and went back to UNLV to earn his degree in 2007. In 2012, he was working for the Knicks, but I don't believe he's still working for the organization as of 2024. Greg Kobeck Kobeck was one of the top players in New York when he signed with the Duke Blue Devils. He played for Coach K for four seasons, but mostly came off the bench for his career. His numbers peaked as a senior in 91, averaging six points and three boards in around 16 minutes a night. That said, he did play in four straight Final Fours and won the 91 title alongside Christian Leitner, Bobby Hurley, and Grant Hill. Kobeck went undrafted that season and played for a few years in the USBL and overseas before retiring from the game in 97. He then moved to California and is working as a YMCA director as of 2019. Treg Lee Lee went to Ohio State for college ball. 
He didn't play as a freshman, likely redshirted, though I haven't found anything official. As a sophomore and junior, he mostly came off the bench. As a senior, Lee solidified his spot in the starting lineup, dropping 11 points and just under six boards a night alongside Perry Carter and the rest of the Buckeyes. It doesn't look like he was drafted, but Lee did play for several years in the CBA and overseas. As of 2016, he was back in Ohio as a coach and official, helping teach the next generation about the game. Marcus Liberty. Liberty was a dominant high school player for Kinn College Prep in Chicago. He'd stay in-state and attend Illinois for college ball. There, he formed the Flying Illini alongside Nick Anderson, Kendall Gill, Lowell Hamilton, and others, helping the team to the 89 Final Four. Liberty only played two seasons of college ball, but showed out as a junior, dropping 18 points and seven boards. That led to him being drafted in the second round by the Nuggets in the 1990 draft. Liberty carved out a four-year career in the NBA with stints in Denver and Detroit before jumping to the CBA and overseas in 94. He'd play in several leagues until retiring in 2002. As of 2023, he lived in Florida and worked as a youth coach. Mark Macon. Macon played his college ball alongside Eric McKee and Eddie Jones at Temple. He was selected as the National Freshman of the Year by the USBWA in 88 after averaging 21 points and six boards. His numbers hovered around that mark during his four years with the program, and Macon was a four-time All-Atlantic 10 first-teamer, a second-team All-American 88, and won the A-10 Player of the Year Award in 1989. He was then picked eighth overall by the Nuggets in the 91 draft. The 6'5 guard never stepped towards stardom, but did carve out a six-year NBA career before playing overseas for several years. He retired after the 2001 season and jumped into coaching in 2003 as an assistant at Temple. He's been working in that profession ever since, working as the assistant of the head coach at Temple as of 2024, alongside former teammate Aaron McKee. Mike Maddox Maddox left Oklahoma to play for Kansas. Boo! As a freshman, he won a title with Danny Manning. That said, Maddox didn't play much that season. He did average double digits off the bench as a sophomore, but his numbers dropped over the next two years despite starting nearly every game as a senior. He decided not to pursue a pro career, instead earning his law degree and working for a major firm for a decade. Then, he became the president and CEO of a major bank. While he never made it as an NBA player, he certainly used his skills in the hardwood to set him up for a successful life. Eric Manuel Manuel started his college career at Kentucky. He played in 32 games as a freshman, averaging seven points and three boards a night. However, before his sophomore season, the NCAA charged him with cheating on his college entrance exams after it was discovered he had the same answers as the student sitting next to him on 211 of 219 questions. Manuel stood by his innocence, but was ultimately barred from participating in NCAA competition. In the end, he went to play at the NAIA level for Oklahoma City University. That league's governing body initially tried to keep him from playing, but Oklahoma court struck down the ban, and Manuel led the school to back-to-back -to -back NAIA national championships in 91 and 92. Manuel went undrafted after that, but he did sign with the Nets in the preseason. He didn't make the roster and moved to Europe to play ball overseas. At some point, he reportedly moved back to Oklahoma City and was working as a social worker. Bobby Martin Martin took his talents to Pitt, quickly becoming a key cog for the Panthers. The 6'9 center came off the bench as a freshman before becoming an everyday starter for his last three years. Over his collegiate career, Martin averaged 11 points and 7 boards. He also tied a pit record with 7 blocks in a single game. Martin then spent time playing in the CBA where he won the league's championship in 1994. He also went overseas to play pro ball in Spain before jumping into coaching. As of 2023, he was seemingly working as an AAU coach in Massachusetts. Rodney Monroe Ice joined NC State and was an immediate contributor for a Wolfpack team loaded with future NBA players. During his first season, he only averaged 11 points as guys like Chucky Brown and Charles Shackelford got the bulk of the team's looks. In the next season, Monroe became a 20 points a night player. That number would grow to 27 during his senior season when he won ACC Player of the Year and made several All-American teams. As of 2024, Monroe is still third all-time in career points scored in the ACC. The Hawks selected him with the 30th pick in the 91 NBA draft, and Monroe played a single season in the league before jumping to the CBA and several overseas leagues. Monroe played until the 2007 season before hanging him up. As of 2024, he's working as a coach and director of basketball operations at a private high school in North Carolina. Elliot Perry The six-foot point guard played high school ball at Treadwell, the Memphis school that would later produce Penny Hardaway. 
Perry didn't have Penny's height, but he was skilled enough to sign with Memphis for college ball. Perry started all four years for the Tigers, averaging double-digit points all four seasons. He made the All-Metro Conference twice and averaged more than 20 points a night as a senior. That year, he was supposed to play alongside Hardaway, but academic issues forced the younger Treadwell star to take a redshirt season. Sox was then selected by the Clippers with the 37th pick in the 91 draft. He had a few stints where he started for the Suns and Bucks, but never averaged more than 10 points a night in the NBA. Even still, he played in the league for several years, finishing out his career with a 10-day contract with the Grizzlies in 2002. After leaving his playing days behind, Perry joined fellow Memphis alum Hank McDowell in the broadcast booth for the Grizzlies. He's also since become a minority owner of the team. King Rice Rice signed with North Carolina for college ball. Playing alongside guys like Steve Bucknall, J.R. Reed, and Rick Fox, King never became a breakout star. That said, he did play in 140 games for the Tar Heels, averaging 6.2 points and 4.5 assists over his career. Once his playing days were over, Rice joined the Oregon staff as an assistant. He's been coaching around the world over the last few decades. As of 2024, he's working in the head coach at Monmouth, a position he's held since 2011. Dennis Scott Scott was one of the many top players from his era to attend Georgia Tech. Joining Dwayne Farrell, Tom Hammonds, and Brian Oliver, 3D won the conference's Rookie of the Year in 1988. And in 1990, he was joined by Kenny Anderson and took the Yellow Jackets to the Final Four while winning ACC Player of the Year. Scott skipped his final season of eligibility and was selected by the Magic with the fourth pick. While Scott never became an All-Star, he was a solid scorer at the NBA level, teaming with Shaquille O'Neal, Penny Hardaway, and Nick Anderson to take the Magic to the 95 Finals. After seven seasons with the Magic, Scott bounced around to several more teams before retiring after the 2000 season. Again, he never became an All-Star, but his ability to drain threes made him a key NBA contributor, and it's possible he could have been even better playing in the modern era. After retiring, Scott started a broadcast career. His son is playing for Georgia Tech to start the 2024 season. Brian Shorter In high school, Shorter was only 383 points behind Wilt for the Philly record, but decided to transfer to Oak Hill for his senior season and miss out on his chance to break it. The move was largely made to try to improve his test scores, however his scores didn't improve enough and Shorter had to sit out his freshman season at Pitt. When he did take the court in 88, Shorter was an impact player, dropping nearly 20 points and 10 boards a night. He was named Big East Freshman of the Year and his follow-up campaign was more of the same. However, his minutes dropped by about 10 per game as a senior and his numbers fell in kind. Shorter went undrafted in 91 and spent several years playing overseas. By several years, I mean that Shorter last played in Italy in 2010 when he was 42 years old. He also became an Italian citizen in 91, so I'm assuming he's retired there, but I haven't found anything official. If you know more, share it below. LeBradford Smith Smith left Texas to play for Louisville. He was a day one star with the Cardinals, dropping double digit points all four seasons. That culminated with nearly 17 points and five assists a night as a senior. Smith was then selected by the Clippers with the 19th pick in the 91 draft. He played two full seasons with the team before being traded to the Kings after seven games in the 93 season. That said, Smith's most notable moment of his NBA career was when he dropped 37 points on Michael Jordan in Chicago. Reportedly, Smith came up to MJ after the game and said, quote, Nice game, Mike. Jordan took offense and dropped 36 points in the first half the next time the Bulls played in Washington. Since then, it's been confirmed that Jordan made up the nice game Mike comment to motivate himself to outduel Smith next time. After the 94 season in Sacramento, Moose played in the CBA and overseas until retiring after the 2000 season. It looks like Smith is working in sales as of 2024. Elmore Spencer Spencer started his college career at Georgia. He only played in 11 games of the Bulldogs before deciding to transfer to UNLV. After sitting out one season, the seven-footer became a key member of the Running Rebels, helping the team to dominate records in Jerry Tarkanian's final two seasons before the coach was forced out. Smith was then selected with the 25th pick by the Clippers in the 92 draft. He carved out a five-year career in the NBA, but was really only healthy for the 93-94 season when he dropped nine points a night. Spencer then played in the CBA for a few more years before leaving the game behind. I have been unable to find out what he's been up to in the years since, so if you know more, as always, share it below. Anthony Tucker Tucker started his college career at Georgetown before taking a redshirt season and transferring to Wake Forest. The 6'8 forward was a double-digit scorer during his three years with the Demon Deacons, but went undrafted in 92. 
He did sign with Washington in 94 and played in 62 games before being waived after the season. Tucker then played in the CBA, winning the league's newcomer award and the rebounding title in 97. It looks like he's back in DC coaching the youth level as of 2024. David White. White played his college ball at Florida State. Over his 100 plus games played for the Seminoles, White was mostly a rotation player, posting averages of 1.8 points and 1.9 rebounds a night. Interestingly, it looks like White tried to switch to the gridiron and play tight end for Florida State in 91, though I've been unable to find anything saying he made the team. If there are any FSU fans out there, please let us know in the comments. Potentially, Seminoles quarterback Charlie Ward convinced him to make the switch after the FSU QB played on the basketball team in 91. Though he also played with Brad Johnson when that quarterback joined the FSU basketball team in 88 and 89, what I'm saying is those FSU teams were a lot of fun.